Warning, this video contains ideas which are not government approved. Hello, my name is Larkin Rose, and uh, like a lot of people these days, I'm fairly strapped for cash, but I think I've come up with a solution. I'm allowed to rob you. Having to earn money is just too inconvenient, so I just gave myself permission to rob you. So I'll be by your house around, let's say, noon tomorrow to uh, see which of your stuff I want to take. Now, this isn't just a threat. I'm not just saying I'm going to rob you. I, by writing this down, gave myself the moral right to rob you. So maybe, maybe I should have done it like this. I hereby grant to myself the absolute moral right to steal your stuff. So since I just gave myself the moral right to take your stuff, um, I'm sure when I show up, you'll give me a warm welcome. And uh, in case you think I can't give to myself the right to rob you, uh, some friends of mine helped me out with this one. They, they signed this one. So it isn't just me now. A lot of people have given me the right to rob you. Uh, and in case you weren't impressed with these sort of simple printouts, uh, my friends and I had a, a very formal meeting and, and put together this somewhat verbose but very official looking document. You can read all the details if you really want, but the long and short of it is, now I'm allowed to rob you. So this document makes it all legit. Um, I now have moral permission to rob you. And since I'm sure you're a fine, upstanding citizen, I'm sure you're going to uh, cooperate when I show up tomorrow. So if you could have your uh, valuables all laid out uh, by noon tomorrow so I could see which, which, which of your stuff I want to take, that would be good. And then we can... What? Why are you giving me that look? Yeah, surely you don't doubt that this gives me the right to rob you. Surely you're not questioning the legitimacy of this document. Surely you wouldn't still claim that I don't have the right to rob you. I do. See? It says so right there. What? You don't think this is good enough? You don't think that this is binding on you? You don't think that this gives me the right to rob you? Let me show you something. This is a copy of the United States Constitution. And what it says, among other things, is that the Congress shall have power to lay and collect taxes. In other words, a long time ago, a bunch of guys got together and wrote down on a piece of paper, we have the right to rob you. Now, they didn't call it robbery, they called it taxation, because it sounds nicer. But it's essentially the same thing. We have the right to take your property from you by force if necessary, without your consent. Now, they also wrote a whole lot of rules about how the robbers would be appointed and the legislative rituals which would have to precede the robbery and the different kinds of robbery they'd be allowed to do. But in essence, what this piece of the Constitution says is, we have the right to rob you. And did you believe them? When I did it, when I wrote down on paper that I had the right to rob you, you gave me a funny look. When they did it, did you believe them? Did you accept that this gave them moral permission to take your property without your consent? I bet you did. If you're like 99.999% of the population, you have accepted as unquestionable gospel the notion that this piece of paper gave to some mere mortal human beings the moral right to forcibly confiscate wealth from other people and call it taxation. In fact, if you're like 99.999% of the population, you've never even thought about this until right now. The IRS, it's hundreds of offices across the country, it's 100,000 employees all the properties they've seized, all the bank accounts they've wiped out, all the people they've prosecuted and thrown in prison, all federal taxes, income, estate, uh, employment, excises, all of them, all federal tax collection stems from this scribble of ink 
on a piece of parchment. This is supposedly the source of the authority for every bit of that. These few words scrawled on a piece of parchment a couple hundred years ago. By writing this, they claim to bestow upon those people calling themselves Congress a right that you don't have and I don't have. The right to take money by force, if necessary, from other people. And I bet that up till now, you have accepted that as unquestionably legitimate. You accepted the notion that this little bit of ink on a piece of parchment written hundreds of years ago actually gave moral permission for certain people to rob millions of other people. And I bet you look down on any who don't believe it. The people who are called tax cheats because they try to not get robbed, even though this piece of parchment says that somebody is allowed to rob them, I bet you think they're despicable criminals. I bet you cheer when those people have their bank accounts wiped out and their houses seized and get thrown in jail because you really believe that this little bit of ink on a piece of parchment from a couple hundred years ago gave the moral right for some people to steal from other people. Wow, they must have had some powerful magic ink that by writing down on a piece of paper, we have the right to rob you, they actually altered morality. They made stealing into a good thing in certain situations. Now, I'm betting that you immediately realized when I showed you this piece of paper that it was bogus, that it was silly for me to claim that a piece of paper could give me the right to rob you. And it doesn't matter if it was done in magic marker. It doesn't matter if I printed it out. It doesn't matter if I did it myself or had other people sign it. Nothing, no ritual, no document, no legislation that I could do, that any number of people could do, could give to me the right to rob you any more than they could give me the right to murder you. But that's not what you were taught in school. You and most of your friends and most of your neighbors were all taught and all believed that this scribble on a piece of parchment gave the moral right to certain people to rob millions of other people. Well, that belief, as widely held as it is, is more absurd by several degrees than believing that I could give myself the right to rob you with this piece of paper. For starters, at least my piece of paper claims a source for this alleged right to steal. I have the right to rob you because I said so, or because my friend said so. The Constitution doesn't even do that. It says Congress shall have power to lay and collect taxes. It doesn't say where they got it. Second, my scribble on a piece of paper identifies a living, breathing person to whom this right to steal is supposedly being given. Me. The Constitution claims to grant this power to people who weren't even born when the document was written, who weren't born for 200 years after the document was written. Likewise, while my scribble on a piece of paper identifies a living, breathing victim, you, the Constitution pretends to give the right to rob people who wouldn't be born until 200 years after the Constitution was written. That's like me writing, my great-great-grandchildren shall have the right to rob your great-great-grandchildren. In fact, it's worse than that, because there are no time limits in the Constitution. In short, what this scribble of ink on parchment alleges is that the people calling themselves Congress will, until the end of time, have the moral right to forcibly confiscate wealth from people without their consent. Let me put this as bluntly as I can. If you believe that this piece of paper gave me the moral right to rob you, you're out of your mind. If you believe that this piece of paper gave to Congress the moral right to rob you, you're certainly not alone, but you're still out of your mind. It's time to get back in your mind and start rethinking some of the absolute bunk that you've been taught all your life.